Okay, this sermon is entitled, False Heavens Reflect a False Jesus. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 84 reads, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house, and they swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Now, when it comes to false heavens, the first thing that comes to mind is mythology. And even in secular religions whether it be monotheistic or polytheistic, you have false heavens as well. For instance, in Hinduism, you have what's known as Vaikuntha. That's the heavenly dwelling place of the Hindu deity, Vishnu. In Norse mythology, there's the Viking heaven known as Valhalla. In Egyptian mythology, there's the fields of Eru, which is an endless expanse of fields dwelt by the god Osiris. And when it comes to Christianity, we don't have false heavens, We just have false ways of getting to heaven. And no matter what the false way is, it's always a reflection of a false Jesus. Now in John chapter 14, we see that there's only one way to heaven. It reads in verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now obviously coming to the Father means to enter into heaven because God the Father is sitting on his throne in heaven. In Psalm 47, It talks about God reigning over the heathen and sitting upon the throne of his holiness in verse 8. So therefore, the only way to get to heaven, biblically, is to go through Jesus Christ and him alone. And when it comes to work salvation, anyone who buys into this garbage is not going through Jesus alone to get to heaven. And their version of John 14, 6 should actually read like this. And works-based religion saith unto him, Man is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by himself. And that would encompass all forms of works-based religion. Now, in keeping with all that, the reason why a testimony is so important is because it lets other people know what a person believes concerning the gospel. A veracious testimony lets somebody know that the person given the testimony is heaven-bound and they believe on the biblical Jesus, whereas a false testimony does the exact opposite. For instance, if a person has believed on Jesus Christ, as found in John 6.47, they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they have everlasting life that can never be lost. Now, when it comes to a false gospel, they always lead to a false heaven. And in the case of Christianity, that would be hell. And this is a reflection of believing in a false Jesus. Let me give you some examples. Here goes. Number one, if you believe that sin will keep a person out of heaven, and that could be habitual sin, certain types of horrific sins, or perhaps just living like the devil, then you have a false Jesus who didn't pay for sins. If you believe one must repent of their sins to go to heaven, you believe in a false Jesus whose sacrifice for sins at the cross was not enough. If you believe one must persevere to get to heaven, you believe in a false Jesus that didn't persevere for them at the cross of Calvary. If you believe you must obey the commandments to be saved, your false Jesus didn't fulfill the law for them like it says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. If you believe salvation can be lost, then you have a Jesus that failed as a savior and can lose his sheep which is the exact antithesis of what it says in John 6, 39 and 40. If you deny instantaneous salvation, secured by a nanosecond of faith in Christ, then you have an impotent Jesus that is still trying to save people to this very moment, hasn't saved them already in the past, and isn't powerful enough to finally save them in the future. If your Calvinistic Jesus only died for the elect, then he's not the Jesus of Scripture who is the Savior of the whole world. So the conclusion of the matter is this. Work salvation is simply man abortively attempting to pay for his or her own sins, which means they have a false Jesus 
who fail to pay for sins at the cross, and hell, which is their false heaven, is the only place they can expect to go to to make this self-payment for sins. So if you want to go to a false heaven, whether it be Elysium, the Elysian Fields, you know, Shangri-La from the Lost Horizon, or perhaps Nirvana, or the Other World, or even Paradiso from Dante's Divine Comedy, then your false Jesus, who requires works and repenting of sins and persevering to the end, he might get you there. But when it comes to going to the biblical heaven as found in Scripture, you need the true Jesus, who died for all sins, was buried and rose again, and who gives eternal life as a free gift to anyone who simply believes on him for everlasting life. So your false heaven is always a projection and a reflection of a false Jesus. And whenever a person is wrong about salvation, it proves that they're not going to the real heaven, and all they've ever trusted in was their false religion made Jesus, who's nothing more than an effigy of the real Jesus, and a stupid idol that can't save anyone. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.